My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, 28th of November, 2021, the first Sunday of Advent. And today, we begin a new season in our liturgical calendar, a season of Advent. Advent is a term that comes from the Latin root Adventus, which means coming or waiting. Today we have the first reading from the book of Prophet Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah is a prophet of hope. And the reading says, from the root of Jesse, the Messiah would come to restore peace, righteousness, and justice. You know, after the death of Josiah, the king of Jerusalem, Sedekiah became the king of Jerusalem, the king of Israel. But then Zedekiah was defeated by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He looted the entire country. He captured the rich and the mighty. He captured the king himself. And he killed the sons of the king in front of him. And after that, he gorged out his eyes and took him blinded as captives. And he left only a few pure, poor people in the country. After this, Jeremiah says, someone from the root of Jesse in the lineage of David would come and restore peace and justice. And we Christians believe Jesus is that Messiah coming from the root of Jesse, the lineage of David, who would re-establish through the establishment of the kingdom of God, justice, peace, and prosperity. And that's what we are waiting through the season of Advent, the coming of Jesus, the birth of Jesus as the Messiah. In the second reading, we have from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. And he would say, we have to wait for the second coming. And he used the term here is parousia. This is the second meaning of waiting or second meaning of Advent, waiting for the second coming of Jesus. You know, at the time of Paul, the people thought Jesus would come again as a judge very soon, but they waited and waited, nothing has happened. So therefore they began to deviate from that intense waiting to a life of immorality, life of uh, laxity. And to them, Paul is telling, not only that you wait for the Lord, but as you wait, you also need to live a life of holiness. So prepare yourself for the second coming. That's the second meaning of Advent, waiting for the second coming. Advent also has a third dimension, waiting and living a life of holiness every day of our life, in hope, in optimism, and in faith. Every day when we receive the sacrament, particularly the Eucharist, as well as the participation of the sacrament of reconciliation, that we need to really wait for the Lord. So therefore, three aspects of waiting. Waiting for the coming of Jesus as a physical human person, the Christmas. Waiting for the second coming, Perusia, the, the as a judge where we are accountable to our life and waiting every day to receive Jesus in our day-to-day -day life. Advent also has certain symbols and that signifies the season. We have a circular wreath of green color. The circularity represents the eternality of Jesus Christ. He is beginningless and endless, the Alpha and the Omega. He is Anadi Anantam. And we participate in his eternality. And the second aspect of this ruit is it is of green color, which shows, uh, to which represents a sense of hope. We hope in the person of Jesus Christ. And 
We also have certain candles, four candles, three of them are for purple color and one is of rose or pink. The purple color shows the penitence, the repentance, the preparation that we need to undergo to receive Jesus. And the pink color is a sign of joy. It's on the third Sunday of uh, Advent and uh, we are coming closer to Christmas and therefore it is time to celebrate Gaudathis Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. And we also have uh, the, the light lit, the candles lit. The light represents our transformation. The transformation we should have uh, as we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus. Okay, these are the literal meaning as well as the symbols of Advent. But now, one question. The theme for the Advent is hope, preparation, and waiting. Waiting with the total preparation for the reception of Christ. Why should we uh, wait? Why should we change our life? Why should we turn to God? You know, I, I, I just wanted to share with you a story from the Mahabharata. Once a Brahmin was trying to sacrifice, trying to perform his sacrifice, and he was drying his grass, the darpan grass, a deer took away this grass. And the Brahmin told the Pandavas, the Kshatriyas, please go and find the grass from the deer. They went around searching for the grass. They couldn't get, they were tired, and they reached near a pond of water. And he drank that water. First one drank, he died. The second one drank, he also fell dead. The third one and fourth one, they drank the water and they all fell dead. And finally, Yudhishthira, the leader, comes there and he sees every one of his brother fell dead. And he asked, what has happened to this? Then he hears a voice and suddenly Eksha appears in front of him. He said, they drank the water and they fell dead. And then Yaksha told him, you can also drink this water, but before drinking this water, you, if you answer my question, you shall not die. And he asked the question. He asked, what is that most, uh, what is that thing that amazes you the most? What amazes you the most? Yudhishthira thought for a while, and then he told Yaksha, you know, the human beings by nature are mortals. We come here, we live 60, 70, 80 or 90 and then we die. But human beings live as though they are here forever. This is what amazes me the most. Every one of us know that we are temporary, we are limited, but we live as though we live here forever. This is what amazes me, amazes me the most. The ability for the human beings to be fully involved in this world, knowing fully well this world is not ours. In the Katha Upanishad, there is another distinction they make between prayers and srayas. Prayers is something that is pleasing to us. They are also good. Good food, good education, good uh, material wealth, long life, healthy life, all these things are good. They are pleasing to us. But they also speak about Sreyas, which is something different from this good. That's also good. That's a higher good, like righteousness, truth, eternal life, value-based life. So these are two different things. Unfortunately, today, we are go after what is pleasing to us. As the Bible says, you look after the world, you give in marriage and getting married, you are fully worried about the cares of this world. You fail to recognize the divinity in you and recognize the divinity around you. And you fail to live by the values that the divinity holds over you. So therefore, this is the reason why we need to tend to the Lord. This is the reason why we need to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. This is the reason that we need to make the transition from mere ordinary good to a goodness of life. In the book of Genesis, 
it is said about the object of sin they are good pleasing to the eyes and desirable Adam and Eve took that fruit at and they are out of paradise so sometimes this is the invitation from the gospel from the first reading to change our way of life to a life of fullness that we need to make the u turn to the lord this is the reason we need to change this is the invitation during the season of advent we have to have a reflection whether i am going after things that are pleasing to me or things that are really good for me i just want to conclude this message with what pope francis would tell us in the year 2014 he speaks about the modern mystics and according to pope francis a modern mystic has three different characteristics the first one is that a modern mystic is a man of optimism a man of optimism you know in the world it is difficult to be optimistic he turned the papers the newspapers or you you open the tv you find only negative news but pope francis would say if you are a mystic if you are a religious if you are a person who is close to god you always find some goodness in life be optimistic hoping against hope you find some positive energy the second one is that we should be dynamic a modern mystic is a person dynamic because he is moved by the spirit of god there's a vibration of positive energy and third he would say a modern mystic is enthusiastic enthusiastic enthusiasm is of two words on and theos in god in god a mystic is a person who is fully rooted in god he lives in god so i just want to reverse the order who is a modern mystic a modern mystic is a person who lives in god moved by the spirit of god he becomes so dynamic moved with uh, uh, the dynamism he makes a positive change in the world my dear brothers my dear sisters this season of advent is a season of hope and waiting we prepare ourselves to make a change in the world change for the good moving away from what is pleasing to us to a life of goodness life oriented towards eternal life may the season of advent help you and may the grace of god or grace filled season of advent helps you to come closer to god amen